Hi, I'm going to show you how to bend AI to your will. In my last video, I showed you how to generate an image through Midjourney, turn that image into mesh, and then import it into Unreal Engine to enable Nanite on it. In this video, I'm going to show you how to generate a curvature map and utilize it, and also to deform your mesh into any shape that you would like. So let's get into it. Here's a list of the things that you'll need, and all of the links to everything will be in the video description below. So with Blender open, I'm going to make a tile, and I'm just going to fast forward through this part. If you're interested in learning how to do that i like i said in the beginning of this video i have made a video showing you exactly how to do that so i'll be back with you in a second All right, so now that we have our tile ready to go, uh, we're gonna work in the shader editor first. If you don't have a normal map generated already, you'll want to generate that. All right, that's done. And for the curvature map, it's the same thing with the normal map and the height map. With the normal map selected, you just want to hit generate curvature map and it'll give you exactly what you want. There it is. All it is is grabbing like the cavities or, you know, the curves, I, I suppose, in uh, the crevices here. And that's exactly what we need because we're going to throw some moss into the cracks and try to uh, bring it to life a bit. We have our cur curvature map generated. Look that up, break these real quick. And you just need a any any sort of moss material. Any or you know, whatever you want to mix. It doesn't have to be moss, but that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to grab that real quick. Alright, make this bigger for you. So I have my albedo for the moss. And I have the normal map for the moss as well. And depending on how the material looks, you might want to duplicate this so that you can scale the moss separately. And that's probably what I'm going to be doing. So, And in order to mix the albedo for the moss and for the uh, sort of Aztec looking uh, thing I have going on here, all you have to do is use a mix node. So you just type in mix, connect those up, and the uh, curvature map you're just going to drag off the color and plug that into the factor and if we take a look at it that's what you get and it looks pretty good um, but we want a little bit more control over the factor so break that connection drag off type in color ramp and that's what we're going to be using in order to control where the moss is going to be growing on this so if you drag them into the middle, you'll see uh, it's sort of in the cracks and that's kind of what we're looking for. This doesn't look too good at the moment. Just got to play around with the sliders to get the desired effect you'd like. All right, something like that looks nice for me. If you have a normal map for the base material that we're using and also for the moss, all you need to do is use a mix node for that as well mix those together color into color and you want to use the uh, output of the color ramp as the factor for this as well so they're using the same sort of space all right so now that we have our tile generated and we have moss on it and all that we need to bend it so what i like to do is tab in the edit mode grab this furthest most corner set the cursor to it and set the origin to that spot it's going to make it a bit easier when we're using the curve modifier <clears throat> because the origins for the curve and whatever you're using on the curve need to line up cursor to world origin selection of cursor good and i'm just going to hide this for a second while we make our curve i like to use a mesh circle and then bump up the vertices a lot. You don't have to bring it up this much, but if you don't bring it up to a high resolution, then you're going to see the lines going through um, when we bend our mesh around the curve. All right, now we just need to bring it over on the X, set the origin to the 3D cursor. And also with it selected, just right click, convert to curve. We'll unhide our plane here and I'm going going to add that curve modifier and you'll see this um deform axis you just want to play around with it when you go to rotate it it's going to be confusing because stuff is flipping upside down and around so you just want to do a little bit of trial and error 
in order to get it the way that you want. Neg negative X is looking good for me. And then I rotated it by 180 degrees to get it on the positive axis. So you have a circle. It's two meters by two meters. And this is also two meters by two meters without the curve modifier being shown. But we want this to wrap around the entire circle. So what we're going to do is we're going to scale it on the X and Y. And if you don't know, you could just click and drag on X and Y and edit both of them at the same time. And we're gonna do a little bit of math. And that math is just two times pi. And that'll give you what you need. It, it should be uh, two pi r, but the radius of the circle is one meter. So times like something by one, it's just gonna give you the same, the same thing. You don't have to worry about that. So apply the scale. Don't apply the rotation yet, because you'll, get a messed up result because of this curve modifier. And look at that, that's pretty cool. It's fairly simple. You could add an array modifier, make this a bit taller. You can scale it on the Z or I guess it would be the Y in this case and make it a bit shorter. Do whatever you want in order to make it look the way you want. I'm just gonna keep it simple. This is good. I'm going to apply the curve modifier. This next part is uh, kind of annoying because it's so perfect you're gonna have a hard time finding the uh the edges because we started with a plane and we have two sides and now they're wrapped up and you know touching each other and if you tab in the edit mode you know you'll see a, a ton of geometry and the annoying thing is it's hard to find the seam but uh as luck would have it i found it pretty quick so once you find your seam you want to select them, try to get in real close here. And then with both of them selected, it might seem easier just to, uh, you know, hit M and merge by distance. But I find that a lot of the times it's not, it's not doing what I need it to do. It's uh, kind of making weird geometry. And I just want to keep it as, as beautiful of a mesh as all of this. So if you hit control three, you can bridge the edge loops. And by default, that's just going to make another line of quads going all along. You can kind of see it right here, but that's not what we want because it's going to stretch the material. So th there's a little checkbox right here called merge. And that does what exactly what you think it does. It just merges the edge loops. You can kind of see the seam here. When I made the tile, I missed like one pixel on one side. So that's on me, but Otherwise, that looks pretty good. So we have our mossy pillar and it looks okay, but um, if you notice, it lost a lot of its height in the geometry. It's, the things aren't sticking out as much. And that's because when we scaled it up by two pi in order to fit this circle, we didn't scale it up at all on the Z axis. And that's something that, um, you know, it, it is what it is. But we can fix it really quickly by adding a displacement modifier and a new texture and using the height map, the base texture of this pillar. And if you switch the co coordinates to UV and use the UV map, you'll see right away that things are sticking out a lot more. Um, it's a bit strong, so you can bring it down to like... You know, 0.5 looks pretty good, actually. I think something like that looks pretty good. There you go. So that's looking pretty good. And you could do this with all sorts of curves if you want. And you could do it after you applied the, uh, the circle curve. If you wanted to bend this around a um, Bezier curve, Bezier, however you like to say it, um, all you have to do is make sure that the origin point for it is uh, on the world origin, or at least the, um, the pillar's origin and the curve origin is the same. All right, and that about covers it. If you found this video interesting, like and subscribe. And in the next one, I'll show you how to break uh, the pillar like this using the rigid body simulation for Blender. And I'll also show you how to do it in Unreal Engine 5 so you can have some uh, interesting rubble in there as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.